I sacked former Emir of Kanu, Lamido Sanusi, because of abuse of power. That is according to Governor Ganduje. And the crisis in the Southwest PDP takes a new turn as the Zona Theatrica Committee suspended its chairman. This is Plus Politics. I am Kayodi Ladende. Welcome, this is Plots Politics. After a long period of silence, Governor Umaru Ganduje has revealed his reason for sacking Muhammadu Lamido Sanusi as the Emir of Kano. He explained that he took the decision to save the system and the traditional institution from abuse. The governor revealed that the appointment of the deposed Emir in 2014 was done to despise Jonathan not necessarily because it was the best man for the job. Joining us to discuss the intricacies around this statement from the governor of Kano State, we have joining us uh, Barrister Efiong Inibehe, who will be giving us an insight. Good evening, Barrister. Good evening. And we also have the special advisor Thank to... Thank you for having me. Yeah, we also have the special advisor to Governor Ganduje, that is uh, Mr. Tanko Yakasai. Good evening, Mr. Yakasai. Yes, good evening. Yes, uh, let me start with um, the essay to the governor, probably uh, in case this statement was misrepresented or misquoted. What exactly was the governor talking about, about his decision on the former Emir of Kanu? Well, the governor was uh, speaking yesterday at an event, a book, uh, public book presentation of the former president, that's uh, President Goodluck Jonathan, which held yesterday at the International Conference Center in Abuja. And he was trying to give a background uh, on his uh, relationship with the former president. And one of the things he mentioned was the tactics he employed in dealing with uh, the deposed Jamia of Kano, and that was uh, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi. So uh, the context that the governor was speaking from was that he, uh, that is SLS Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, at that point when he was a CBN governor, who was uh, practically uh, in the same government with Jonathan, and uh, uh, the governor felt uh, if, this, if the CBN governor then had issues with the, the government, he should go to the president to to him uh, the issue he had or the plans that he had, and then probably exhaust all avenues uh, with his principal then to resolve the issues instead of um, uh, playing to the gallery and going uh, yeah with. So in the same context, that was what I was trying to allude to how former Amy. Uh, uh, did his um, uh, his state Kano as the Emir of Kano? You know, a lot of the time uh, uh, he has never approached the governor to advise or to propose any solution. Uh, the Emir was all playing to the gallery, and uh, uh, that similarity okay. was led, what led to his well in the first place okay. as the Syrian governor, and that was also. Okay, Tanko, we'll, we'll come back to you. I think uh, we're having a bit of issues. I, I want to believe that uh, probably you might need to change your location so that we can have a better clarity with your audio. But I think your point was clear enough, but we can make it better. Okay, let me listen to uh, Barrister F. Young. In, in, uh, how do you see this play out? You know, do you consider this as a revelation or... You just felt politicians are at it again. I want to begin by saying that I do not speak as an expert in Kanu chieftaincy or emirship disputes or tradition. I speak as a Nigerian who followed the controversies 
that trailed the removal of Sanusi as the governor of the CBN and his dethronement as the emir of the Kano Emirates. Now, what Ganduchi said at the said book launch, for me, is not of much significance with the, the greatest respect to the governor of Kano State. I said so because when Mr. Sanusi was dethroned as the Emir of Khan, the information that was peddled or that was circulated in the public domain by the governor of Kano State and by the government of Kano State was that it was removed from office essentially on account of alleged misappropriation or mismanagement of Emirate funds. This is what was said to be the basis or the rationale for the determinant of the Emir. But if the governor is now saying that Sanusi become the Emir because of political considerations to spite the then president, good luck, Jonathan, it therefore means that the revert throne of Emir of Kano was basically reduced to a partisan, uh, you know, to subtle partisan and political scores. I find that very unfortunate. I find that very regrettable. But to give context to this, I do not think Nigerians are really bothered about this drama that has played out. What is of note to some of us is that the Emir was dethroned following his consistent attacks or his consistent critical comments, not only about the government of Kano State, but also about certain norms and traditions that have held sway for many years in the northern part of the country, which hitherto had been seen to be sacred in Islamic traditions. For example, the Emir is known to have spoke, gone on record on a number of occasions to speak against child marriage, to speak against the Amaljiri tradition, and also to be very critical of the application of public funds by politicians. So I do think that it would be decept, deceitful to limit the basis for his removal to what the governor has said. For okay. me, there is more to this. Okay, uh, if you I will, I'll this come back to you, please. I, to I want us it. to manage our time. I'll come back to this. I was just going to uh, try to remind you that uh, I, I think there's a kind of uh, misrepresentation in the sense that what the governor is saying now is that the same way Jonathan removed him for abuse of power is the same way he removed him too as the emir of Kano. But we'll come back to that. Let me listen to the governor's uh, spokesperson to also look at the points you've raised and to also add and ask him that if you recall, this was, uh, Ganduje was the deputy governor then when Emir of Kano was uh, enthroned. So did you not see this that, um, it, or you didn't consider it as a political move then? Okay, let me let me say that uh, I think there's an echo, maybe with a connection on the network, because I can I can hear uh, voices from the studio. Maybe if you can work on that, the technical guys. Okay. Secondly, let me correct um, Barrister F. Young. Uh, a lot of what he has said uh, is inaccurate. Uh, the the uh, emergency was deposed because of insubordination. Misappropriation of funds was an ongoing investigation and it was not part of the reasons that the area was withdrawn. He was withdrawn mainly because of insubordination. And this then was the reason of his removal by the president. That was what the governor was trying to do in life. Also, the things that they speaking about, sometimes, uh, first one is in the Kaduna, in the Kaduna Kalashi, where he attacked Kano State government. 
loan for for okay you know mr yakasai i i totally uh see your point and i'm sure in the next one or two minutes this will be sorted the network is terribly bad and we'll make sure that this is sorted in the next two minutes but in the meantime let me continue the conversation with uh, barrister f young now if i understand what mr yakasai is trying to remind us is that um John, uh, probably Emir wasn't the best candidate to become the Emir then, that's referring to Sanusi, and he's trying to put the record straight that we should look at the Emir being removed for abuse of power, which is what they are mentioning now, and not necessarily to spite uh, uh, good luck Jonathan. I do not agree with him. But recall, I started by saying that I do not speak as an authority on the Kano tradition, the Emir chieftaincy, or the the traditions of the Kano Emirate. I speak as a Nigerian who is observant, as a Nigerian who has followed the issues that are under consideration. Let me also place on record that I was among those who opposed strenuously the unceremonious, controversial removal of. Mr. Sanusi as the governor of the CBN. I spoke publicly against it. If you go on the internet, I'm confident you will see my views on this. I still believe that his removal had more to do with the facts that he spoke out about what he perceived to be corruption, about what he perceived to be the disappearance of funds. Now, for me, it is exactly for the same reason that he was dethroned at the EMEA, except that my reason or my perception is not consistent with what my friend, Mr. Yakasi, is saying. He is saying that he was removed for insubordination. But that is for those who are in power. That is for those who take delight in not being criticized, those who believe they are above the law. It was for the same purported insubordination that the CBN governor okay. was removed as CBN governor. So, Jonathan said he shouldn't have spoken. Sanusi also, the governor Ganduji also said he shouldn't have spoken. But how come nobody is talking about the real issues that he spoke about? Okay, that good is questions. He, he's, I, he's ready to the, answer now. Evion, Evion, he's ready to answer now. I understand we have him back. Please, so many questions on your table, Mr. Yakasai. Yes, let me begin with what he, Mr. Barrister Evion just mentioned. Nobody is saying that uh, he should not speak. The, uh, the SLS has every right as a Nigerian to speak on any issue. But uh, I think the, the right thing to do as an employee of either the federal government or the state government is to channel whatever he has through the appropriate channels. He, he did not write to uh, Good Luck Jonathan officially to notify him of the concerns he has as CBN governor. He has never met the governor of Kano personally to notify him of the concerns or proposals or criticisms he has with the policies of the government as a uh, emir of Kano. That is not the right way, you know, as a public servant, that is not the right way to go about it. How do you feel now if as a in your own chamber, someone comes out publicly without confiding in you on some of the issues in your chamber and started asking you uh, just to play to the gallery and do some points? So that is what we are saying. Nobody is saying he should not speak the truth. He wants to let him resign from his position and go on and uh, speak. Moreover, speaking directly against his own principles. He's not talking about someone else. You know, okay. this is what that, this is the issue Mr. that we are talking about. Mr. Yakasai, let me stay with yes. you before I go back to F. Young. I know he's itching to respond to the issues you've raised. But can we get something clear? Can we allow the traditional institution to exist independently as much as uh, they are under the local government, which is another debatable issue in our constitution, but can we respect that office rather than treating them, using your word now, as public servant who must either koto to, to the dictates of the governor? Respect begets respect, Mr. Coyote. Before Sanusi, the, the last Emir of Kano was Adu, he was there for 53 years. You understand? Well, as a result of 
you know, uh, the the people for those assigned to saddle with the responsibility of uh, sitting on the throne, you'll expect that it comes with some restrictions, it comes with some expectations, and uh, they, like you rightly mentioned, they do not have any role in the constitution, you unfortunately. So as far as we have to look at how to look at it, look at what role the institution are providing the traditional institutions, definitely is not a thing to ask. But as far as the institution is, is, is concerned, it's explicitly stated that you know all public governments need a political Okay. I, 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 we will also resolve this. I think we are losing that audio again, but I will never forget the punchy points you raised. Respect beget respect. Okay, Effion, is this a problem of our constitution or is it a problem that we have to live with where the traditional institution can be made to submit to the political authorities? Well, the the reality is that, that today there is no constitutional recognition of uh, traditional institutions. Traditional rulers are basically product of uh, their states or local governments. The constitution does not give them any role. They are not even mentioned anywhere. There is no reference to our traditional institutions, except for the passive reference to customary laws or the Sharia courts that are cognizable under the constitution. But beyond that, there is no clear court role, there is no clear court recognition of the institutions of our traditional tools. Now, I do appreciate what Mr. Yakasai has said, but do not forget that currently we have the revered sultan of Sokoto, who is seen generally to be the leader of Muslims in the country, who is seen to be the highest traditional ruler in the north, the reverse sultan. He has been very outspoken lately about the insecurity in the country. He has been saying certain things that you wouldn't have expected that the sultan would say. And he said he said this thing publicly, he goes on record to say these things. Will the sultan now be dethroned? for criticizing the government for failing in insecurity. We also have other traditional rulers who have spoken out. I do not think that our traditional institutions should be treated as appendages of political power. I do not think that they should be reduced, they should be relegated to pawns of governors. I do not think that it is proper for a governor to wake up in the morning and say, oh, I am displeased by comments made by a traditional ruler, therefore he must be thrown for his subordination. If a traditional institution must have value, if a traditional institution must be respected, must be revered, they must be protected, they must be shielded from this kind of partisan control. But on the other hand too, the irony of this is that, as Mr. Yakafaya said, and Ganduje also said, even Sanusi's enthronement is attention. So the throne itself was shrouded in politics. Hmm. And he also left in a manner that was shrouded in politics. And this is exactly the point I am making. Okay, Mr. Effion. Why can't we insulate our traditional institutions from, from politics. these partisan co controversies? Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Effion. And I want to quickly direct that question to uh, Yakasai. Two questions in one, two prong question. Number one, how do we... Um, give such kind of respect because the Emir of Kanu is also a first class traditional ruler. You recall what happened in Edo State where the, the monarch even summoned the incumbent governor, summoned the former governor, summoned, you know, major candidates. And he, they were able to give him that due respect. So, what stops the Emir of Kanu from enjoying this kind of privilege? And secondly, how do we insulate them from this political control? Well, the answer is uh, somewhat similar. Uh, uh, the simple reason, if uh, you give an example of uh, Oval Benin, we all know that Oval Benin is a political. He is not political, he is not partisan, he is regarded by both, as, by both camps as a father, as a royal father to everybody. 
And that is critical. In Kano, for those of us that in Kano, we know how Pakistan was when it was the end. We know how important to work with the opposition, probably because he felt that they were the ones that brought him into power. So they are the religions towards them. And that is why the problem is. In as much as you cannot, as a particular ruler, you cannot hold it out from politics and be the part that the whole then that mean to be a problem. And that, that is also... Yeah, maybe you need to move your phone close to your mouth so that we can hear you more audibly. If you can move your phone close to your mouth, I think it's... Okay, too, can you... Is it clear now? It's clearer now. Good. Okay, so like I was saying, the first question is also related to the second question. The only way to insulate our traditional institutions is for them to be able to respect the institutions in the first place you know, and then uh, try as much as possible not to be political. He made an example of the Sultan of Sokoto. Sultan of Sokoto is speaking on the insecurity situation in the country. And he is raising concerns directly to those in charge. He is not ridiculing the government. He is not attacking the government. He's just raising concerns as he should do. And that is the difference between what he is doing and what SRS is doing? SRS was, was, was playing to the gallery for just for applause and what have you. And that is the difference. Okay. So as long as traditional leaders will be apolitical, I think they will continue to enjoy the respect of uh, Nigerians across the divide, you know, and uh, this is how it should be. Okay, I I'm coming back to you for your last comment on this. Brister Efiong. I think two of you are agreeing on different levels of this conversation. But let's remember how Sanusi came, uh, uh, um, came into being the emir. You remember that when he was suspended as a CBN governor, uh, APC showed him a whole lot of love. You remember that even this current governor who sacked him as the emir was the deputy governor then, and he was really embraced. It was the function of the governor to also make him the emir of Kano. But I think the dilemma is, would he have abandoned Kwan Kwan so when he was having issues with his uh, former deputy, who is now the governor? And how do you think this should have played out? I honestly agree with Mr. Yaka said that a traditional rulers should shrink themselves of political bias. They should be above board. They should be above partisanship. But we cannot have this discussion in an hypothetical or academic sense. We must contextualize it. Now, for some of us who are observants of the events in Kano, do not forget that this dethronement had everything to do with the re-election of the governor of Kano State. Well, now my brother has said that unlike Sanusi, sorry, unlike the, the revered uh, Sultan, Sultan of Sokoto, that the Emir was basically playing to the gallery. But I do not think I ever heard the Emir of Kanu. I stand to be corrected, making direct reference to Gambuje. He never mentioned him by name, to the best of my knowledge. I don't think he ever mentioned him by name. He was only for Zephyros, he was only outspoken on certain issues that are perceived to be a taboo in you know, the northern traditional and political establishment. He spoke about things that nobody would have expected a traditional ruler of his standing in the north to speak about publicly. I do not think he ever called out Governor Ganduje by name to say, oh, Governor Ganduje has failed in so so and so. He spoke <laughs> indirectly, he never called his name. I don't okay. think that ever happened. And that is exactly what the Sultan of Segoto is doing. So if we are to dethrone every traditional ruler who speaks out, example, we had the album of Calabar recently. Go on the internet, you see it, calling for the removal of the governor by name. He has not been removed because the album of Calabar is not seen to be one entity that one governor can just come in and remove and enthrone and dethrone. That is the same mindset, the same perception that the emir of Kanu was seen. Nobody would have thought that an emir can be removed so easily. Of course, I know this has happened before. I know one of the cases even went, you know, to the Supreme Court. But one of the point I am making is that our politicians must realize that we cannot pretend to be living in a democratic country. 
where a governor who is elected for a term of four years will propagate himself, will represent himself as being above blame, as being above reproach to the point that nobody can castigate him. Okay. For me, I still believe that the removal of the Emir had more to do with politics than what is being tagged in subordination. Beautiful. Because about the government okay, who Evian, does not want to Evian, be don't worry. Do you, not forget. Do don't not worry. Forget. Don't worry. I'm and coming back to you, Evian. Also. I'm coming back to you. My producer has just given me some extra time to continue this conversation. But let me quickly go back to Yakasai. You were saying, mm, and mm means that you have a different narrative. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly do you know? Because... I think abuse of power sounds too political to remove the head of, a, of, of an institution. Is there something more? Is it about the power contest between your principal and, his, uh, 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 and uh, Rabi Okwan uh, let, me, let me first of all uh, tell Barista Efiom that we have a thing in House Alangwe. You know, they say that... Uh, you know, if you go to the market and throw an insult, you know who you are directing it at. So maybe SLS didn't have to mention him, but uh, we all know who his uh, attacks were directed to a lot of the time. And sometimes some of these things are not just uh, on the media. The relationship between him and the things that happen uh, on the ground in Kano for us to see and know. Uh, let me give him another example. Like I started during the program when I mentioned the example of the Kaduna uh, Economic Summit where SLS uh, attacked Kano State government. You know, he didn't mention him, but he quoted the amount, he quoted China, and uh, he quoted all the other things that uh, indicated that he was speaking about Ganduji. Unfortunately for him, that same, uh, that same Kaduna that he was speaking during that event, that same Kaduna was also, has gone far in terms of uh, their light rail project, but he did not uh, attack, direct his attacks on that particular state. Uh, he felt he needed to attack Kane. So just to give a bit of a, a, a concept into how it was done. To answer your second question, uh, of course, like I said, uh, the, the SLS perhaps felt his allegiance was towards Konkoso, uh, his, uh, the Konkosia movement. Uh, we remember some instances where uh, he was even wearing their uh, traditional white and red uh, cap. That was uh, the time he went to visit the president immediately after the election that was declared inconclusive. A clear sign of where his allegiance is politically. But no things like this. So it has been known for all those, particularly in Kano, that his allegiance is towards uh, and so on and so forth. He held a meeting behind closed doors privately in the night. That photo is uh, public, the public knowledge, with the candidate of the PDP in Kano privately. You understand? So, 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 so okay. all these things are what we allude to. And uh, you cannot deny the fact that he is uh, in bed with the Kompasia group, which is the political opposition of Kanu and the uh, governor, uh, Dr. Ganduji. Thank you so much. Uh, I wish we have more time to continue this conversation. But let me quickly get your last comment since I promised you, Barista uh, Are you? Is it crystal clear now that this is what was shown and uh, you have to reap what was sown. That's more of the Emir delved into politics and he got his hand burnt. Is that the case yet? You, you cannot totally deny that, but we must also remind ourselves that beyond the theatrics, beyond the dramatization that these actors have put on to entertain the Nigerian people, the people of Kano need responsible leadership. Okay. The people of Kanu need a government that attends to their yearnings and aspirations. The Nigerians are desirous of a country that works. So let our politicians and public office holders appreciate that they cannot come in through a democratic process and want to stifle and destroy that same process to entrench themselves. Beyond all that has been said, the people of Kanu should also pay attention to the serious issues that the Emir has spoken about. It's not just about the rail project. It's not just about the 
political intricacies. There are socio-cultural issues in Kano and in the northern region that northern brothers and sisters has to have to talk about. That, that is the point. Okay. Thank you so much. I wish, uh, like I said, thank you for your time. Thank you for your position on this issue. And that's uh, Barrister uh, Inibehe Efiong for your uh, comment. And uh, I want to say thank you to you, Salihu Tanko, who is the special advisor to Governor Ganduje on media. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes, thank we'll you. take a short break now. And when we return... A new development occurs in the ongoing PDP crisis in the Southwest region. That will be up for discussion after this short break. <laughs>